anything, emotions are showing priorities. And so sometimes we are excessive in our emotions, but what they are telling us is, ah, this is very important to you. So uh, this, like, the economist Robert Frank, when he talks about why is it that emotions that seem so irrational sometimes would have evolved? Why would we have irrational emotions? And so he points out that something like anger can be, in the long run, a very rational response. So if I get very, very angry, if say you cheat me out of one dollar, I get so mad that I punch you, and I get arrested, certainly that's irrational. But what does that do? It tells everybody to not cheat me in the future. Never cheat Pizarro because he's so crazy that he'll punch you even if it's for one dollar. And Frank calls these emotions commitment devices. What it's showing the world is that I'm committed to being treated fairly, and so, so I will feel these things. So another way of saying it is expressing emotions shows what priorities are. Robots can't show us that, right? You can program a robot to have priorities, but as you say, we're built to detect sincerity in emotions. If somebody smiles a fake smile, eh, which I look the we think that, that that fakeness means that they don't care. And robots, they, <clears throat> of course, they don't care or not care, but they will be programmed and they'll do it. So my own attitude is, we gotta get over this. Robots, we, we program them to, to say, take care of my parents. They will take care of the parents. We don't need them to have these emotions. But I think robots highlight a very different kind of problem. Um, that we haven't faced yet. Um, and that is whether or not we will really accept them. And I'm of two minds here. On the one hand, you have, I think, what a lot of roboticists are doing right now. They're trying to make robots more human. So they say, well, one way we'll get William to let the robot take care of the parents is if we make the robot sound like it has emotions. So if it says, I really deeply care for your parents, I promise you, I make a promise as a robot that I will take care of your parents. But there's one reason we have, you know, uh, in our movies with robots like in Her, there, there's a reason we have an actress playing the voice because she communicates emotion in a very, in a way that no robot can yet, right? Uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> of course you're going to trust Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> uh, and so, so that's one strategy is, let, well, let's make robots convincingly emotional so they can seem like they're committed and that they have this uh, feelings for other human beings. And I don't know if that's the best solution because, and this is, I think, a, an empirical question. So I think I will know deep down that that's not true in a way that I don't know for a human being. I know that there's no way the robot is actually feeling what I'm feeling. So sometimes I think, well, maybe we should just make them like service machines. We should just say, this robot will serve all of the needs in a very robotic way, and I will be the one to love my parents. This robot can clean their diapers, can feed them, can give them injections at the right time, and then I will come along and, and be the human aspect of the relationship. And, and maybe that's the better strategy to take. I think we're, we, we think so much of of our abilities to make robots convincing. But it's like, to me, it's like Siri, or, you know, or, or OK Google, or whatever, where what becomes so obvious is the better they get, 90, something like 95% accuracy is horrible. Because that 5% of the time when they make an error, it really reminds you that they're not, they don't understand you at all, right?